As a tutor for past decade, the biggest problem I see for high school students when they're preparing for the SAT is that they don't have a plan. I mean, even if they have a plan, it's not a solid plan. It's like a wishy-washy plan. So whenever I get new students for tutoring, the first thing I ask them is, hey, what are you currently doing right now to study for the SAT? And they either say I'm doing practice questions, practice exams, I'm studying concepts, whatever. And I ask them, why are you doing that? And none of them can answer that question. They're literally doing something for the sake of doing something because they know they have to raise their SAT score and they can't just be sitting around not doing anything. In order for you to minimize the time and effort that goes into SAT prep and to maximize the result that you get out of it, you really have to have a solid plan. So in this video, guys, we're gonna talk about three things. First, what is it like to be a student who is studying without a solid plan and what are the consequences? What are the downsides of studying without a solid plan? Second, we're gonna talk about why you don't have a solid plan. And lastly, I'm gonna give you my solid plan that I've been using with my current students. So if you're ready to get started, smash the like button and let's get straight into this video. So here's a quick story of a someone who doesn't have a solid plan. So they know that they have to study for the SAT. So what 90% of the students do is they order a book off of Amazon with good reviews and start reviewing through pages, flapping through pages, hours and hours, days and days. However, the other 10%, they actually do some research. They go to forums, they go to Reddit, they ask their upperclassmen, hey, how did you study for the SAT? And based on what those people say, they make a plan out of it. See, they have a plan, right? But it's not a solid plan. Here's why. Exam. So what they do is they go to Amazon, order a college board, 10 practice exams, and they get the in the mail and they start grinding it out. And after about a week of preparation, you start talking to your friends about it because you know, you want to let them know that you're studying for the SAT and trying to get that thick 1600. And you know, you're talking to one of the smarter friends in the group and you tell them, hey, I'm doing practice exams right now. I'm going to get that thick 1600. And this is what your friend says. Whoa, bro, yo, hold on, hold on. You're doing practice exams right now? You can't be doing that right now. You have to go straight into concepts first. You do concept first and then you go into practice exam. And you're just standing there like, whoa, oh, okay, okay, maybe that's not the right thing to do. So you go home, you ditch your practice exam book and you go to Amazon and order a concept book. I mean, of course, with good reviews. And you're grinding the concept books out. And what happens over the weekend? You go somewhere and you talk to one of the upperclassmen. An upperclassman says, hey bro, hey bro, no, concepts, nah, <laughs> that shit. No, don't do that. Go straight to practice exams. And before you do the practice exams, make sure you do extra set of practice questions off of this book. And you tell yourself, of course, of course. I mean, this guy, Jimmy, he obviously doesn't want me to beat him on the SAT. So he's telling me the wrong thing to do. I'm gonna listen to the upperclassman because he's always right. And I'm gonna go, go back to my practice exams. And, and about two months has passed by and you look at your score and it's consistent. It's it's consistent. It's so goddamn consistent. It's not going up. It's not going down. It's just consistent. It's just so consistent. So you decide to get yourself a expensive tutor and guess what the tutor says? Hey man, you can't be doing practice exams or concepts right now. SAT bro is all about that time management and that test taking strategy that no one's talking about. Let me teach you all that. And turns out that tutor is also full of shit. So you get yourself another tutor and he tells you that you have to be starting off with concept. And trust me, you have to start off with concept. And by the way, guys, you're gonna need all of those things like concepts, practice exams, test taking strategies, and time management. You're gonna need all that to really ace on the SAT. And in order for you to master all four of these things, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time in it and be consistent with your studying plan. But if you don't have a solid plan and you're just kind of like jumping ships between this plan to that plan to that plan to that plan, you'll become a beginner of everything, but a master of none. But before we start talking about a solid plan, we have to ask ourselves, why is it that we can't stick to our plan? Why are we constantly jumping ship from this to this to that? And it's actually really simple. It's because you're afraid. This whole SAT thing, you have never done it in your life. It's your first time. And even if you ask different types of people, they all tell you different things and you're not really sure which one is the right thing to do. So somebody gives you a advice on what the right thing is and you try that method for about a week or two. And if your score's not going up, you get start to get anxious. And you start talking to other people and they tell you, hey, you have to try this method. And you try that method for about a week or two and your score doesn't go up, you slowly try another thing. It's like a cycle. It goes over and over and over and your score is not going to go up. A little bit of psychology behind this is that it's like your brain's defense mechanism. It's, it's, it's happening without even you knowing it. Let's say you're studying for the SAT and somebody tells you to do it a certain way and if it doesn't work out, it's not your fault anymore. It's that person's fault. That's why you're constantly seeking other people's advice on how to study for the SAT so you won't be responsible just in case it doesn't go up. Of course, I'm not saying that you are doing this intentionally. It's just how our brain has evolved for past 2,000, 4,000 years. But guys, back to the main point. 
In order for you to start raising your SAT score, you have to be a master of four of these things. And in order for you to master them, it's going to take a lot of time. And most importantly, you're going to have to stick to your study plan. But how can we come up with a plan that we can actually stick to? You want to make sure that your plan has these two main components that gives you the confidence that you're going the right way. First is that you have to understand your plan. And let's say your study plan is to do this, 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 and that. You want to make sure that you understand exactly why you're doing that. And it logically makes sense. If the plan doesn't make any logical sense, of course you're gonna ditch that plan the next time you see a better, better, better sounding plan. And second, you wanna have some evidence that this thing works. If your school has about 20 people that studied using this method and they saw a big increase in their SAT score, you're more likely to be confident with the plan and stick with it long term because you know it works. It's a reality, it's not a fairy tale anymore. It works, this thing works. People have done it and people have gotten a higher score. If you see that other people have done it, it gives you the confidence that you can do it too as long as you you follow the method but here's the hard part how can we possibly come up with a plan that we can understand but also have an evidence that it works well let's jump into my computer